All right, so this didactic lecture is on pleural effusions. Uh, we just have had the basic uh, lung ultrasound lecture, and so the next few lectures will be uh, specific things that we're going to be looking for on lung ultrasound. As I discussed in previous uh, one, previous lecture, there are a lot of different signs. Uh, you should have by now learned about A lines, B lines, and lung sliding, and we're going to go through a few other uh, some of these a few of these other signs that are particularly p pertinent to pleural effusions. So again, um, these are all the various things we can find and we're going to focus on pleural effusions for this round. Remember, again, when, you, when you're when you doing this at the bedside, we have a specific question. In this case, it is a system-based, uh, not a system-based question of just looking at the lung, but more particular, a problem-based question meaning how do we evaluate hypoxia in the critical care or emergency setting. We also sometimes evaluate pleural effusions for other things such as pneumonias or if uh, we're looking for a drainage or if we're looking for the patient is on the ventilator for long periods of time and we're trying to determine if putting a chest tube in to remove fluid will help that patient out. Another scenario where we may use this is if the patient is on non-invasive ventilation and we see a large pleural effusion to try to de determine if the pleural effusion is being is affecting the hypoxia and a resp and or respiratory effort of the patient. So remember, pleural effusions almost always reach the pleural line. So when you look at the different areas of the lung, you may see pleural effusions in different locations. What specific questions are we asking with pleural effusions? First of all. How much fluid is present? Small, moderate, or large? Remember, we're not trying to quantify exactly how much. We just want to see a general idea if there is a large amount of fluid or not. And then the second best question is, where is the best location to do the procedure? Most of the time in the intensive care unit or the emergency medicine setting, we are only doing uh, chest tubes in the mid-axillary line level. But in other scenarios, radiology may do some inoculated collections in the posterior region or anterior region of the lung. The probe you use is the abdomen probe, or you can use the cardiac probe with the abdomen presets. Uh, this is the best to evaluate the fluid and the echogenicity of the fluid. <laughs> so pleural effusions are very common in critically ill patients. In MICU, 60% of patients will have pleural effusions at some point in their uh, stay, and 41% have them present on admission. This application in itself might be enough reason to use the ultrasound machine. It evaluates volume, nature of effusion, and the best location to do the procedure. Typically collects in dependent areas. It's traditionally located from the abdomen exam, meaning mostly on supine patients from the mid-axillary line, but it can be actually done through the PLAPS point also um, through the back if you have loculated effusions. So as I mentioned in the previous lecture, there are areas that we look at. For pleural effusions, we typically look at the lateral zone or the posterior zone. Very rarely will there be loculated anterior pockets of fluid. I have seen a few of them in pulmonary contusions from trauma patients, but most of the time when we're trying to determine the amount of fluid or if a chest tube needs to be placed, we're looking at the lateral zone. Again, remember, there are upper points, lower blue points, phrenic line, and pleural effusions are typically in the plaps point. That's where we're really going to be looking at them, either the phrenic line or the plaps point. So remember, there's an anterior wall evaluation. We're doing really stage two and stage three evaluations. We're looking at the lateral wall from anterior to posterior axillary line. I'm not saying you can't, but you can also look at the posterior wall, but we typically don't uh, put chest tubes in the back on supine patients in the ICU. Again, this is just showing all the different points that we can look at and try to imagine for this, this pleural effusions, we're looking really at the phrenic point or the plaps point. So a few of the signs. In this, uh, one of the signs is called a quad sign. It's a static sign. The borders are the pleural line, the upper and lower shadows of the rib, and the deep border, which is roughly parallel to the pleural line and the regular, which really represents the lung surface. 
There is a jellyfish shine where aerated lung floats over the effusion. As lung becomes more injured, it typically becomes more towards the same density as the fluid surrounding it. There is another sign I have not listed here called a hematocrit sign. In usually traumatic hemorrhage uh, effusions, we will see we will see a hematocrit sign where you see layered amounts of blood and the echogenicity is like not as dark as a regular slow growing pleural effusion. Sinusoid sign is a dynamic sign. It's showing the respiratory variation of the interpleural distance. Essentially you put the M mode on the lung where you see the effusion and if you see a sign like sign uh, that shows that the fluid is either new and thin or that the lung is actually expanding through the fluid. If you don't see a sinusoid sign, that, some, that indicates that the lung is trapped and not able to expand with aeration or with breathing. So a little bit more on the quad sign. This line is called the lung line, the deep border, and is the visceral pleura. It's usually visible when both pleura are separated by structures that allow ultrasound transmission, such as fluid. The lung itself can be normal, show alveolar consolidation, or even B lines. In this case here, you actually see B lines down here. <coughs> this is the lung. This is the this is the pleural fluid, and these are the rib shadows. In this, this is the sinusoid sign. You see that you can um, you can see a sine wave being formed through the fluid. So a sinusoid sign is a dynamic sign with respiratory variation and interpleural distance. It also indicates low viscosity, very viscous or septate, and does not show sinusoid sign. Here's an image in of that we produced where you see the pleural effusion right here. You see the rib shadows. And you see an M mode through the pleural fluid and through the lung. And as the patient is breathing, you can actually see a sine wave being formed. Jellyfish sign is aerated lung that floats over the effusion. As the lung becomes more injured, it becomes more towards the same density as the fluid surrounding it, and it looks kind of like algae. So jellyfish sign usually is seen early in, when pleural effusions are early, or if they have just accumulated. Here, now I want you to learn how to kind of determine whether a effusion is small, moderate, or large. So the top left is a small effusion, the middle one is a moderate effusion, and the bottom right is a large effusion. Essentially here, you see a small effusion because you see lung that expands all the way up to the chest wall, you see a little fluid here, and you don't really see a lot of fluid below. In a moderate effusion, you see fluid. You kind of see jellyfish sign right here where, where the lung is kind of flopping around. And again, you still don't see fluid posterior. You kind of just see fluid over here. Now this is the liver, this is the diaphragm, and this is the fluid. Now in this effusion, this is a large pleural effusion, you actually see fluid below. You see fluid on the side and fluid above. There's a nice margin of it, a margin which you can measure from here to the lung. And um, you see the diaphragm and the liver, and that's what constitutes a large effusion. Now remember, one of the things I try to mention is before we even get to this spot, you must be able to identify that this is the diaphragm, and that this is the uh, chest and lung, lung cavity. And the way you do that is you show the kidney and liver or spleen interface, then you show the liver or spleen by itself, then you show the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the most important structure to identify when evaluating for pleural effusions. <coughs> so we're gonna show you a few more. We're gonna show you a few more pleural effusions. And um, you're gonna see right here, this is a probably a moderate pleural effusion. You see a diaphragm, 
you see the um, pleura, and you don't see fluid down here. This is another moderate pleural effusion. You see a large pleural effusion here. You see liver or spleen. And you actually see the lung with little possible air bronchograms, which we'll learn a little bit more when we get to the pneumonia section. Now, if you were to measure this, you would actually measure to the where the chest wall ends and the fluid starts probably from here to about here. The reason is if you were to do a, a drainage of this, your needle would take the path of this and go all the way to about here. So what you want to do is you want to show that 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 needle that that needle is going through that. So now we have are we done once we have evaluated the general pleural fusion? <clears throat> Remember you have a transidate. You can have an exudate. You can have pleural pleurisy. Um, the MICU cardiac failure is 35% of the cause. Atelectasis is 23%. Paranemonic is 11%. And empyema is 1%. Now remember, transudates are anechoic, and anechoic effusions can be transudates or exudates. And all echoic effusions are exudates. Ultrasound is not reliable for indicating puncture is not necessary. You can only kind of determine whether, you can kind of guess, but it doesn't really go one way or another based on the ultrasound. Now remember, if you have no movement, you have no sinusoid sign. This is another sign called plankton sign. When you have visualization within a tissue image of a slow whirling movements of numerous particles, the hyperechoic structures could correspond to infectious gas and this can be seen in hemothorax. Uh, this should be done in the plaps point. Here's another one where you see honeycombing. That also indicates an effusion. Uh, so if you have a tissue-like echogenicity, you have plankton sign, and you have a thing called shred sign. I'm going to show a little bit better image of that when we do our pneumonia lecture, but that all indicates to you possible pneumonia. And then you may need to do a pleural thoracentesis just for analysis. <clears throat> here's a shred sign, here's a lung, and you see the shredded lung tissue. So remember, quad and sinusoid signs confirm presence with 97%, with the gold standard of is withdrawal of fluid. Ultrasound can detect effusions. Up to 525 milliliters can be missed on a bedside radiograph. Effusions allow you to see deep structures like the aorta better, but consider exploring prior to evacuation. The last thing that a lot of people ask that we're not really, I told you at the beginning of the lecture that we don't really worry about as much is the quantity. All we're really worried about is minor, small, moderate, or large. That might be more important in the full, with the full clinical state. But there are some, uh, there are really not a lot of guidelines, but there are several protocols that show indicating the volume of fusion. One of them is called the PLAPS index. The probe at the PLAPS point and measuring from pleural line to lung line uh, the probe must be as tangential as possible. This is what I was mentioning earlier, how you would measure, except PLAPS is done at the posterior part of the body. So in a supine patient, uh, you, would, you would get this in the back part of the patient. So you measure on expiration, since small effusions will have lung line touch the pleural line. They usually you get between 1 to 4 millimeters, rarely 5. And if you get 7 to 10, you're probably questioning the VAT technique. But if you get 0.3 centimeters, that in, this is in the posterior region, remember, that indicates 15 to 30 mils of fluid. If you have 1 centimeter, that indicates 75 to 150. 2 centimeters, 300 to 600 mil. And greater than 3 equals about 1 to 2 liters of fluid. The limitations are that lung can be floating early in fast effusions. Massive consolidation will make lung dive towards the earth. You can look at the anterior or phrenic points, but those are not really validated in these studies. And there are many other methods. But remember, we're not here to quantify. We're really here to look at, we're really more here to look at the, the amount of fluid, mild, moderate, or large. So last slide, pleural effusion technique. Remember, you're going to look for presence of quad and sinusoid signs. You have a safety distance of 15 millimeters seen over three adjacent interspaces. So 
What I typically do is I try to look at multiple spaces, kind of average them out, and if you're above 15, 1.5 centimeters or 15 mils, then you probably have a safety margin where you can do a, a thoracentesis for either collection of fluid or drainage. Check for absence of other critical structures like the lung, the aorta, the heart, liver. And that's why I tell you you should be measuring the, uh, you should be looking at the diaphragm when you're doing this. It should be done immediately at the time of ultrasound evaluation. So as you prepare the patient for the evaluation or the thoracentesis, you can evaluate them before, but the evaluation should be repeated right before you actually put the chest tube in. Uh, remember, skin folds and not too much posterior where dislodgements, infections, and decubitus can occur. So most of the time we're going to be putting these thoracentesis in, in or the chest tubes in the mid axillary line. All right, that's it.